I'm going to show you another stitch in the Fancy Stitch Combo series, and this time it is Sideways Herringbone, or I've also seen it called Horizontal Herringbone. Uh, I'm going to give you the instructions for working this stitch. It's just two rows. It'll be in the video description below as well as on my website, and I normally also give you instructions for working any given stitch in the round. I'll tell you this. This stitch in the round actually requires a pattern um, to get it to match up at the beginning of the row. And I found a pattern that's already out there. I didn't need to write it myself. Uh, uh, Pearl Soho, a yarn shop in New York, has a blog, and they have a beautiful cowl pattern out there that uses this stitch combo. So if you're interested in making that cowl pattern or just um, reducing the number of stitches to do something smaller in the round, I'll give you a link to that pattern and you can take a look on their website. It is really pretty. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the samples that I have here. This is a really bulky sample knit out of uh, an acrylic yarn. And the reason I use an acrylic yarn is because this is the, this yarn is really easy to see on camera. I'm going to say, don't do this stitch out of acrylic yarn. It's, uh, it ends up being, having no give to it. And, or at least most acrylic yarns aren't going to have the give of a wool yarn. And it also, when I steamed it out, it really flattened it out. But that's not the acrylic yarn's fault. That's my fault for flattening it out but the stitches aren't very puffy. Anyway, let me show you a better example. Here it is in uh, a wool yarn, which was much easier to work, but it is really tight, uh, it, which is cool looking. You see, it looks like uh, the Vs are going this way and this way in a sideways herringbone pattern. It is very cool looking. Uh, I didn't know until I worked up this sample that the stitch was going to be this tight. So I used a size uh, 10 and a half needle with this chunky yarn, which is usually a perfect combination, but it ended up being pretty tight in this sample. I have more samples to show you to explain that. And here's the back of the work. It's almost a herringbone on the back of the work. I'll tell you, this stitch does lie flat unless your gauge is really tight like this one is, and then it kind of wants to do this. Don't ask me why. It's a weird thing, <coughs> excuse me. Now, this is actually the perfect gauge for this. And it is a worsted weight yarn in size 10 and a half needles, which is a, a much lighter weight yarn than this, but the same size needle. And so it was the perfect gauge, it was much easier to work, the tight gauge is harder to work, but if you're thinking of uh, casting on for this stitch, keep this in mind. Whatever you cast on ends up being much, much narrower than you think. Here is the example. I cast on the exact same number of stitches for these two swatches. I'm not kidding you. This one's garter stitch, this one's sideways herringbone, and look, is it half the size? Yes, it is half the width. So whatever you cast on and you see it on your needle, your finished sideways herringbone is going to be half that size, okay? I make all these mistakes so you don't have to, right? Let's go ahead and get started on the pattern, which is really simple. It's only a couple of stitches, excuse me, worked over and over. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is, I've already worked a wrong side row, and I just have a few cast on here, uh, because I want this to be the pretty side of my cast on. I'm going to knit two, two together, knit two together through the back loop. So instead of going in like this to knit two together, I'm going to knit two together this way. <coughs> Excuse me. I wrap the back needle and pull that stitch through, and this is where you have to stop because it gets weird. You only want to drop the first stitch off the left needle. So it's a good idea to use your thumb or your first finger or whatever it takes to shove that first stitch off, leaving that second stitch on there. And then we're going to go right back to doing what we were doing. I'm going to knit two together through the back loop, pull that through, and then only drop the first stitch off the needle. Boop. This is all you're going to do all the way across. If you're a continental knitter, you might need to use your middle finger to help coax that stitch off the end of the needle. You see what I mean about this stitch being tight? Boop. Yep, 
You do that all the way across the row until you get to the last stitch and you just knit that single stitch through the back loop. So that's a wrong side, that is a right side row. You can see the herringbone pattern starting to emerge. And then the wrong side row is really not that much different. We're going to purl two together normally. And then only drop the first stitch off the needle. Just the first stitch. A little hand strength is helpful with this stitch. Or it, it would be easier if I used bigger needles with this size of yarn, I guess. All the way across the row until you get to the very last stitch. And then you just purl it. Whoops, I dropped a stitch somewhere in there. I will have to scoop back and pick that stitch up. There we go. And that's it, the horizontal or sideways herringbone.